I'm Billy Taylor, and this is Jazz Alive's exclusive broadcast of the 1980 Chicago Jazz Festival, coming to you live by satellite from the Windy City. Tonight's concert is a celebration of Charlie Parker's 60th birthday, and we're hearing some of Bird's friends and associates pay their respects to his memory at this historic event. Coming up next is Charlie Parker's former employer, pianist Jay McShann. And we'll hear Jay's quintet recapture the energy and excitement of Kansas City, the town that gave us Charlie Parker. So stay tuned. Right now, we'll pause 10 seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. From Chicago, this is NPR National Public Radio. Jazz Festival on WBEZ Chicago. Symbols that they have now for most of the Dixieland musicians use now, you know. Well, Joe just took that off and just dropped it on the floor right beside Bird. Naturally, it frightened Bird, and he snatched the horn out of his mouth and he came over that way. I was, he said, I'll get him. I'll get him. He said, he rung that bell on me. I'll get him. Well, now, this was in early 36, and that same year, Basie went to New York, and immediately they uh, uh, made that recording, the Jonas Smith recording, you know. And the outlying area around Kansas City, there were lots of resorts, especially in the Ozark Mountains, you know. Uh, there was a famous band leader who had cut his band down to the small pieces, George E. Lee. So George had a thing down there that he stayed about three months. And so George uh, got Bird to go. Bird got that record player and took him with him. And when he came back, he, he could play all the Lester Young solos, note for note. So naturally, right away, Bird became the thing, because uh, Prez was everybody's idol there, you know. Gene Ramey, reminiscing with Fred Bork in Austin, Texas. Charlie Parker did indeed become the thing, not only in Kansas City, but everywhere. You know, this is a very special evening that uh, reflects the influence of Charlie Parker and uh, many of the musicians who have been gathered backstage and on stage are uh, meeting for the first time in a long time. There are a lot of fans here, there are a lot of people from Chicago who showed up especially for tonight and it's really exciting to see the kind of uh, uh, interaction that's going on because the kind of excitement that's going on, rain or not, is just uh, electric. The air is electric with expectation and certainly so far those expectations have been fulfilled with just glorious music in the bebop tradition. This is a very special kind of uh, presentation on the satellite and we're delighted here on Jazz Alive to be able to be a part of a historic event and to bring it to you out there because whether you are somewhere near Chicago or just couldn't even get close, we want to bring you close via our excitement and what we hope we're transmitting to you. Here is Michael Cascuna with a very special guest. Yeah, hi Billy, thank you. And uh, I am here at uh, ringside, as it were, with uh, Mr. Jay McShann. How are you doing, Jay? Fine, how are you doing? Yeah. What? Uh, oh, I thought that, I thought you were talking, Billy. Um, it's kind of a special band. Is this put together just for this event? Yes, yes, this is put together for this event, yes. And uh, what uh, are you going to be doing, Hootie Blues and all the things that we associate? Yeah, we'll do the old Hootie and maybe we might jump the blues and, yeah. and might do a, yeah. Well, we don't have swingmatism in the set, but we've got another uh, guy coming on, Al Hibbler. Oh. Yes, and plus, uh, confess the blues. And, uh, you know, uh, Yardbird Suite. We open it with Yardbird Suite. Great. So that's a number that Bird wrote when he was with the uh, small group, and he also, we also did it with the big group. Was, was Bud Johnson ever in your band? No, Bud worked with Earl Hines mostly off and on, but uh, we, were, uh, we were acquainted, you know, we were together, you know, and off and on, you know. <laughs> how, long, how long has it been since you worked with this rhythm section? Oh, it's been a few years. Let's say like uh, 20, 20, one or 22 or 20, you know. <laughs> yeah. A few days. <laughs> yeah. You still uh, taking a band out on the road? I know you've been busy making some albums. Yes, and... yes. Uh, we, you know, been, I've been on the road, been doing a lot of things with a lot of different groups, you know. But it's so nice to have the old rhythm section together again. Yeah, yes. And it was uh, really nice to see you in that picture, The Last of the Blue Devils. Oh, yes, oh, yeah, The Blue Devils. 
You're going to be recording again soon? I know you did a lovely duet album with uh, Claude. Is you have some more special projects coming yes, up? Yes, uh, Ralph Sutton and I, do, we did an album together with two pianos, oh. you know, which is released this week, I'm sure. I'm sure it was this week it was released. And uh, at Milt on bass, Gus on drums. <laughs> Great. You know, uh, in the days when, when Bird was in the group, uh, I guess we'd all be rich if we had a dollar for every story about how Bird got his name. But um, you seem to have the earliest and most definitive. How did he get it? Well, we went on our way to uh, Nebraska University to play at eight. And, uh, you know, as you drive along the highway, the, the farmer's chickens ran out in the road, and they ran over chicken, the car that Bird was riding in. And so Bird told the cat, man, go back and get this yard, Bird. So the guy backed up and got the, got the chicken. And we got to Lincoln. Bird had a lady to cook the chicken for him. So we <laughs> called him Yard Bird from there on. <laughs> and See, you know, we've called him two or three different names. It's been Bird, it's been Yard Bird, you know, and all that stuff. Yeah. But that's when we started Yard Bird. Did you get, uh, since you were the leader and you had to deal with everyone involved, uh, did you get a lot of grief from promoters or from critics uh, having Bird in the band? Well, not necessarily. See, because at the time when Bird first was with the band, Bird used to rehearse the read section, and he always I could depend on him to take care of the read section for rehearsal and everything. Anybody was late, he also checked that out, everything that was to be checked. So that's the way it went. But that story about uh, Joe Jones, what, was there resistance among people? That I didn't know anything about. Yeah. Uh, no, I can't speak about that. And when did uh, Charlie leave the band? Was that he kind of dropped off in New York? Uh, Charlie left the band uh, from uh, Detroit, Michigan, and uh, he came back to New York with Andy Kirk's band. And right after that's when he joined Earl Hines. And he joined his playing tenor instead of the alto. But he came told me later, he says, Jay, I love the alto. <laughs> and, uh, we're all glad he did. Yeah. Okay, Jay, I think uh, they're getting ready to put you on. Yes. So uh, thank you very much for talking, and uh, we look forward to the set. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> okay. Hey, Billy, uh, back to you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I was just looking at, while you were talking with Jay McShann, at uh, Ray Brown's smiling face and a whole bunch of guys who were waiting to go on, and everybody's shaking hands. Uh, Bud Johnson and Ray Brown and uh, Jay McShann has just come on stage, and Sid McCoy is getting ready to introduce him. But there's an interesting uh, uh, electronic setup with the uh, men who are, are doing the electronics. We're going to the stage right now, and uh, the uh, Sid McCoy is, is walking toward the mic now. And he's turned around and gone the other way, because he's, <laughs> he's getting all kinds of cues over there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to this great jazz occasion. And it is now time to get down with some of the living legends of this business. Kansas City is noted for, among other things, its barbecue. They really think that they can compete with Chicago in creating great barbecue. <laughs> there is something that it is even greater fame for, and that is some of the marvelous musicians that could have come out of Kansas City and made just monumental contributions to American music and more specifically to jazz. And you will find them right here on this stage right now, playing under the banner of Mr. J. McShann. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That was Yardbird Sweet. Incidentally, that was the number that Yardbird wrote himself, ladies and gentlemen. And now this time we'd like to feature another great gentleman that came to the band just about the same time Yardbird came to the band. It's Mr. Al Hibbler. Give you his version. Oh, I'm the bound. Oh, you can't. The number's time. Get me on your mind.
Why be so unkind? Please, dear. Please, dear. Get me on your mind. Please get me on your mind. Take him out. Oh, well down. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And now this time, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to feature our fiddle player, Claude Williams, smooth sailing, smooth sailing. Smooth sailing. ladies and gentlemen. And now this time we have a number coming up that we recorded back in the early days that features our great bass man, Mr. Gene Ramey. And the number's titled Vine Street Boogie, featuring Gene Ramey.
we'd like to feature a legend, a great legend, as you all know. It's none other than the great Bud Johnson saying, body and soul. And now this time we'd like to feature a legend, a great legend, as you all know. It's none other than the great Bud Johnson saying, body and soul.
Yes, I'm long and dreamy And the sun refused to shine I'd never be blue and lonely If I knew that you were mine Well, Won't you make everything all right Now will it be today, baby Confession, mama, and I'm thrilled by all your charms. You know that I'm in heaven when you hold me in your arms. Well, baby, hey, can I have you for myself? You're a man for me, mama. I don't want nobody else. Well,
Okay. Buck Johnson, Gus Johnson, Gus Johnson, take a bow. Bang, bang.
ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Mr. Gus Johnson on drums. Gene Ramey on bass. Mr. Claude Williams on violin. Bud Johnson and Jay McShann, truly living legends. There will be more, but not by uh, those stellar gentlemen. We have some more legends backstage, and they're about to come out and perform for you. So if you'll be kind, be along in just a few minutes. I'm Billy Taylor, and this is Jazz Alive's exclusive broadcast of the 1980 Chicago Jazz Festival, coming to you live by satellite from Chicago's Grant Park. Tonight, we're celebrating Charlie Parker's 60th anniversary. In a moment, we'll be back with the last set of the evening, and it's going to be a grand finale. The Charlie Parker All-Stars with Dizzy Gillespie, James Moody, Cecil Payne, Walter Bishop Jr., Ray Brown, and Max Roach. So stay right where you are. We'll pause here for 10 seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. From Chicago, this is NPR National Public Radio. You're hearing live stereo coverage of the Chicago Jazz Festival on WBEZ Chicago. We're at Grand Park in Chicago, and we're coming to you live by satellite from the 1980 Chicago Jazz Festival. I'm Billy Taylor, and this is Jazz Alive. Mike, Michael Cascuna is backstage, and he's got lots of folks that he's going to talk to. Let's see who we've scared up for us now. Are you there, Mike? Michael Cascuna. He'll be with us for in, in just a moment. I was looking at the uh, number of people that are packed together on the fence here on stage right. All week long, people have been standing there to get a better view of the musicians on stage. And uh, tonight, you couldn't get them in if you had the best shoehorn in the world. I tell you, they're wall-to-wall -wall people tonight. Here is Michael Cascuna. Okay. Thank you, Billy. And uh, we're down here in the dressing room. I don't believe this evening in music. Seems like one thing tops the other. And there's an incredible, incredible feeling and atmosphere here. And with me is uh, Mr. Bud Johnson, who just, uh, boy, I'll tell you, jazz is like fine wine. It just gets better with age. Huh? Jazz is the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my whole life. It, it brings a lot of happiness and pleasure, even though times may be bad, but we have a lot of fun. We enjoy seeing each other. We travel all over the world and we run into guys that we haven't seen for many years. And of course, the music itself explains it all, I think. Yeah, it sure does. And yeah. that was beautiful. Have you, uh, uh, have you played much with McShane outside of the early days in Kansas City? Well, no, but uh, we are such great friends. And uh, well, I do overseas. I play with him in Europe uh -huh. quite a bit. But uh, like this tonight was just right off the top of our heads. I didn't know what the hell they were going to do. And that's the way it is with jazz. Yeah, well, it's, it's got to be a spontaneous thing, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. You're, all, you're all cut from the same cloth. It just sounded beautiful. I'm sure that beautiful big picture of Bird looking down by it. What a Oh, birthday, isn't huh? that great? Yeah. This was a man that did so much. And, of course, Jay McShann was, of course, the first band, big band that he played with. And uh, it's just nice to have Jay McShann here and me to be yeah. with him, who is also a great friend of mine, you know? And I meet so many beautiful friends that I don't get to see too often. Yeah. This is what jazz does. It just brings us together. Absolutely. And, and I'm so glad for people like this who, and the mayor and the, the, the society here that has a feeling of without these people, we would never be able to keep it going. You yeah, know? and it's beautiful. Beautiful yes. crowd, too. You know, you, uh, uh, you're going to be working with another one of uh, the bands that uh, Parker was associated with, and that's Earl Hines' band tomorrow. Again. Oh, well, Yes. I'm are you going to be using? Are you going to be using? And uh, I've got the music, and we rehearsed today. We got another rehearsal tomorrow, and then we will perform tomorrow night. Yeah, that's going to be the original charts from the Grand Terrace. These will these will be the original charts, which I cra transcribed from the records. Great. And uh, I think I think audience should get a great kick from this. Beautiful. Okay, bud. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.